Up next, part two of my land speeder build. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to another Interstellar Modeler. So, ready to get started here with part two of my build of the Ravel Germany Land Speeder. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, the kit is labeled as 114th in scale, but it really is on the order of 119th to 120th. Now, if you've been following along, you saw in the last video I spent the time completing the figures. Let's take another look at the cast of characters here that we're going to be using for our diorama. So, again, these are replacement figures from Falcon 3D Parts. They can be found on shapeways.com or on eBay. I'll post the link down below. And I'm very pleased with the way they turned out. And thanks again, guys, for all the kind comments many of you left on the last video about them. I'm so glad I took the time to do this because now I can concentrate on detailing our land speeder. This video is going to be less about building the model because it really is not a very complicated model to put together, but more about detailing and painting. What I love about the Star Wars kits is you can weather the hell out of them. They're always looking beat up and worn, and that really is the funnest part of building a Star Wars model, in my opinion. Now, before we get started, I wanted to show you again these pictures that I'll be using as reference. I came across these on Flickr, and they were taken while the speeder was on display at the Peterson Auto Museum. A big thank you to Will for allowing me to share them with you. He's the guy who shot these, and the link is below. They're going to be so helpful for this project. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, before I do anything else here, I wanted to take another look at this gash, and I think I need to address that before I do anything else. So, uh, the area up front is about here in our model and uh, there's another area off to the side which is about right here. So the idea is to uh, actually cut the section out and replace it with epoxy sculpt putty and it should be simple to create these, uh, these lines here and uh, the same thing will happen then on the opposite side. So let me get this marked off we'll make the cut and we'll start filling everything in with some epoxy sculpt. Well, I actually have to pause here. I wish I didn't have to talk you through this because I did have footage on how I ended up creating this gash up front here, but I did end up losing the footage, unfortunately. Something got screwed up. So let me just take a minute just to show you. First of all, this is how it came out. And here's the side damage. And by the way, I did end up using my smaller rotary tool to create the damage that you see there. So this is how I started. I used my Dremel to create these small little holes to open up the area. By doing so, it just makes it easier to cut through the plastic. And then I just cleaned it up with my rotary tool and some sanding sticks. Then after that was completed, I ended up uh, putting in the epoxy sculpt from this side here and uh, just did my best to shape it and sculpt it using my sculpting tools. These are the ones with the silicone heads here. And that was all there was to it. So hopefully that's enough information for you there. If you have any questions, let me know. But after it was dried, I ended up priming the piece. So ready to move on now to the cockpit before um, proceeding to the main body. Uh, some modifications need to be made there. Let's get started. So this is the interior painted with this reddish color. And for this, I combined all Vallejo colors now. Red, red leather, vermilion, rosy shadow. So once that was sprayed on, uh, I uh, thought it was a bit dark. So I added some white to the mix and lightly sprayed that on. Uh, still wasn't quite doing it. So what I did was I just used the brush, as you see here, just dipping it into a very light wash of that mixture and uh, really did a good job to replicate the look of the very dusty interior there. So um, as you can see, there's, there's chipping here. I just used hairspray. You can use hairspray as your chipping fluid. You don't have to use salt. Uh, that's just to create a stippled effect. Um, and it works well. So these are the chairs that come with the kit. Let's take a look at our reference picture again because we want to try to replicate this look. Uh, you can see the chairs are looking pretty worn. And what I've done now is I've painted this with the filler primer. It's very close to sky gray. Um, that way I don't have to gloss coat it. It'll stand up to the hairspray technique without a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some of the hairspray just dabbing it on. I've, in fact, I've got some in a cup right here. So I'm just going to take some and dab it along here. Just apply it onto the chair. Okay, and uh, we're just going to allow this to dry. I'll go ahead and apply the color I'm going to use for this, which I'm not going to use black, by the way. I'm going to use this German gray. It's just a little bit lighter than black.
And this is the control for the cockpit, and I decided to make a modification. Again, looking back at that reference picture, you can see that the uh, console extends from the top all the way through. So just uh, filling in with a styrene piece of plastic, and this is how it looks with the decal now. Well, obviously the cockpit needs to be modified for the figures. In fact, uh, the gentleman who sells the figures does make a note of it on his uh, website there. You can see he says you, in order for these uh, figures to work, uh, you expect to make some modifications to the model. So that's what we have to do. And uh, actually, I've already made the modifications. Let me go through these real quick. So uh, first of all, with Obi-Wan and Luke, you have to make modifications to the dashboard. And yeah, this is what it looks like if you uh, try to place them in there without the modifications. You can see they don't fit. And uh, this one's really easy to do. You just have to take your uh, sprue cutters and just cut away at the dashboard where their legs slide through. You can just eye this and it's very simple because the uh, sprue cutters just cut right through the plastic. It's not a big deal. Now, a couple other modifications I made to Obi-Wan. I'm not sure if you have to do this, but I did it because I felt the figure was too much leaning forward there. Um, I ground away at this section of his butt and also this part of his foot just so that he sits properly there. Um, otherwise, he kind of leans forward, and um, the uh, grinding away of his foot just allows for a little bit more room there so it's not too tight. Um, so once you make these modifications, the dashboard fits right over, and they are good to go. Now, the other one is to the back section. Again, let me show you the uh, picture that's included with the ad that he posts with these figures. You can see he has actually cut away at the back side there. And that's what we have to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut away here because obviously C-3PO sits on the back side with his legs behind Luke and there's no allowance for that. So I'm going to do that next and uh, i got to just be careful about it so it looks clean and not awkward. Well, here we have the area cut out and this was just started by just drilling some starter holes here and then cutting the straight part here with a saw. And then I just used my Dremel to uh, trace along the curved area and finished everything off with some standing sticks and my small rotary tool. So um, we, if we put the top half over, um, you know, he sits fine back there, uh, but it does look pretty empty. So I think it would, be, it would look best if I enclose that. And so I'm just going to use some very thin styrene to do that. Well, I've cut out a three and a half inch piece of 0 0.01 inch plastic. It's almost like thick paper. Uh, very easy to cut and shape. So I'm going to use that for the back side here. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and paint it like dark brown. Uh, and I'll also paint the floor a dark brown too. Okay, so I've uh, colored this in with brown as well as this piece here. And I just used various shades of brown and sponged it on. I thought it would be interesting just to provide some texture. And then I painted this uh, backside brown here. So here's a shot of what the modifications look like. Uh, again, enclosing the backside there with that 0 0.01 inch styrene worked out great. And to attach it to the piece, I used hot glue because I knew that would uh, adhere very quickly. But I'm not depending just on hot glue to hold it in place. I ended up putting some uh, epoxy sculpt putty on each end because I know that will harden and create a permanent bond for sure. Well, I should note that I did have to make one other modification to Obi-Wan, and that is to this section of his arm. I test fitted the figure. I was just curious how this was going to fit with the windshield in place, and sure enough, this blocks him from sitting properly in his seat. Now, when you look at the 3D, uh, the Falcon 3D Parts website, he's sitting in there with the windshield. Uh, I'm not sure exactly uh, why it wasn't fitting, but there was just no way that was going to happen, so I had to take my... Uh, a uh, small rotary tool and gradually shave that away uh, until he fit. Now I didn't take a picture prior but this is what he looks like now and you can see he's fitting in there just fine. So I would uh, do the test fitting before painting. That was one thing I was afraid of is I might I'm, I was afraid that I might uh, ruin the paint job there but it all worked out okay. Okay with the final modifications done now we can see the Accommodate C-3PO as well as R2-D2 now sitting on the opposite side and our heroes Ben Kenobi and Luke Skywalker sitting in the cockpit there. Well, there's another piece I'd like to work on before moving on to the main body, and that is the exposed engine. Okay, so here is the part for the exposed engine, and I started by painting it with gunmetal, then did some dry brushing followed by a wash to make it look grimy. Now, as you can see, I've added in the plastic pieces and tubes that are provided with the kit, and the kit also includes these three pieces that go in between, uh, positioned here, here, and here. 
and they do not come with any holes as seen on the studio model. Take a look at our reference pictures and you'll see what I mean. So to replicate this, I just took my Dremel, as you can see here, and drilled in some holes. And this is how it turned out. So as is, the detailing still looks a little sparse to me, so I thought I could add in some more detail to replicate the exposed wires, cables, and connections. And after giving it some thought, I came up with using this picture hanging wire. If you unwind it and thin it down, I think it will look pretty convincing. And because it's bendable, it can be easily shaped and fitted into our piece. So let's give it a try. Well, here we now have the finished piece. I've just temporarily mounted it in here just to show you how it'll look. And I'm very pleased with how it all turned out. The uh, wire worked out great. You just need to kind of unravel it a little bit or thin it out. And uh, that way it doesn't look too thick or too heavy. But yeah, it all turned out really good. And I think it helps to also drill out the holes in these dividers as well. And super glue was just what I needed to hold everything in place. Well, now that this is done, it's time to move on to painting. One quick note before I start painting, I want you to look at this reference picture I shot off the TV and you'll notice there is a seam line across the uh, engines there. And so I actually need to scribe that here. It's a shame that they uh, didn't mold the pieces so that they came together this way. They actually come together this way and I filled in the seam here. So um, what I'm going to do is scribe that in and uh, the way I'm going to go about doing that is I'm going to use this Dymo tape. You guys might remember this stuff. Um, make labels and uh, this is what I'm going to use as my guide to scribe. So I'm going to go ahead and actually put this along this um, section here and we'll do the same thing to the other side. And um, because this is a lot more rigid it works as a great guide for creating the scribe line. So um, let's go ahead and do it to this side first. It's okay that it took off some of the paint, that's not a big deal. Let's go ahead and do it to the opposite side. The other thing I'm noticing as I'm looking at the reference pictures is that these details are wrong here. Uh, there shouldn't be these indentations here, rather there should be these rectangular here and here um, instead. Um, these also should be offset of the center. But uh, that's just something to note, I'm not going to try to remedy that. There you go. The other thing to note is the pictures from the Peterson do tend to differ a little bit from the ones that we see in the movie. Again, referring back to that screenshot there versus the Peterson uh, picture, you'll notice that uh, the light beige color around the engine housing and the wing that attaches it to the land speeder is pretty much still there versus the one seen at the Peterson. A lot of that paint has been worn away. So I'm going to use both as a guide, but I want to actually paint it more like what we see in the film. Now to paint the grill, I started with the obsidian color. This is a craft paint. It's a very dark metallic color. And over that, I ended up dry brushing some silver in just a random pattern. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is to use masking fluid. I decided to go ahead and do that versus using just a chipping fluid because the pattern is pretty well circumscribed all along the front here. And I think the best way to do that is to use the masking fluid. Looking back at one of the pictures now, you can see there's a lot of gray that peeks through. So what I'm gonna do is apply the masking fluid now before we start painting. And the masking fluid I'm gonna be using is this stuff here. This is what I use for oil painting too, by the way. Um, I ran out of the other stuff that I was uh, using in the past. It was kind of purplish, but uh, this is like a cream color. It doesn't really matter because um, you'll be able to tell the areas that are masked. For this stuff, I, I just buy some cheap brushes from Michaels because they're disposable, basically. Once you use this stuff, 
it's, it's really hard to wipe it off your brush. So. Um, Well, this is how it's looking here, and uh, I'm going to allow this uh, to completely dry before we move on. Uh, as you notice now, some of these areas coincide with where we're going to be putting our paint mask down. And what I'm hoping to be able to do is to literally just put the paint mask over these. But that does mean I'll have to try and get this all done in one application, because if I try to lift that paint mask, it's just going to lift the the uh, masking fluid off. If that were to happen, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. I think I'll be able to go back in and um, fill in with a paintbrush, but uh, I think it would look best if I'm, if I'm able to accomplish that. Well, ready to begin now, and instead of first applying that tan color, I decided to go with the red first. As I was thinking this through, I didn't see much advantage to doing the tan first. Uh, I thought I might weather some of that and then apply the red, but Instead, I'm just going to make it a little more simple here and begin with the red color. So uh, it's a 60-40 mix now of these two colors, a roasted pecan and engine red. And I've also applied the hairspray and salt to some of these areas. And our masking fluid is all dried and ready to go. All right, so uh, this step is done. I did apply a gloss coat just to protect what I've done here so far. And um, I ended up using hairspray as my chipping fluid. I do like using that. It does allow for a good amount of control. And I really like the, uh, the scale of detailing that I ended up here with. We need to move on now to applying the second tone with our paint masks now. So I'm gonna lay these paint masks over uh, what I've done here. The bottom half is actually just this color. So this is all gonna be detailing now to the top section. So uh, hopefully be able to get that paint mask down in one application so I won't have to uh, readjust anything and uh, take the chance of lifting off some of the liquid mask that I've added there. Again, this is from Lou Dalmasso who did this as a personal favor. I, I don't want to imply that he's actually making customized paint masks now, but uh, uh, he did this as a favor for me and it's based on the decal sheet. So um, I'm just going to give this a little more time to set and dry and then we'll get to the next phase. Well, I'm jumping ahead a little bit now, and as you can see, the paint scheme has been applied here. The lighter tone is a 60-40 mix of flat flesh and rosy shadow from MSP, and it worked out well. Here are a couple of shots of the paint masks as they were being applied, and uh, as you can see, it did a great job with achieving the pattern. Now, I didn't record any of it because it really was just a matter of spraying on several coats of the base color. The decals that come with the kit would be a fine alternative, but I just felt the paint mask would be superior and also felt that I could do a better job weathering the stripes too. So again, another big thank you to Lou. I'm so glad he was willing to take the time to help me out with this. I am happy with the way this uh, all turned out here. The uh, masking fluid worked out great to replicate the pattern there as well as that from underneath. Now, one other thing that I almost forgot is that there is a very thin area that needs application of the base color, so I've masked it off here. Following this, I'm going to give the speeder a light dusting of the base color to help blend the dark and light tones and to also soften the contrast a bit. I'll follow that by more weathering and working on several other pieces. Okay, well as you can see now, most of the land speeder has been assembled. There's a few odds and ends that still need to be put on. But uh, what I'm doing now is waiting for the epoxy putty that I placed along the front here. I also used it for the seams here and there's one on the opposite side. And for the back side, I ended up using Bondo's glazing putty since it's kind of a red color there. And I'm just allowing that all time to dry so that I can get to sanding those and touching up the paint. Very pleased with how it all worked out with the uh, misting over of the lighter version of the base color. Uh, the purpose of that was to make the land speeder look dusty and a bit more weathered, as well as to tone down the vibrance of the colors. Now, along with that, I also dry brushed uh, 
uh, just some pale flesh uh, onto the hood here just to give it a little bit of variance in color as I was looking at the reference pictures I noticed it looks a bit splotchy and had uh, just some different shades of, of uh, colors on the hood in particular and I also used the Tamiya weathering kit to add in some dirt and grime here and there. I did some modifications to this piece here. Uh, that piece looks pretty plain. I ended up just adding some styrene rods and some wire there. This is not screen accurate, but I think it looks better than uh, your piece originally did. Okay, well, you know what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and, and complete this off camera and save the final view for the reveal for you. And in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started on the base. Okay, what I'm gonna use for our display is this wooden plaque I got from Michaels. And uh, as you can see, it's been textured because I was going to be using this for a different project. I, I can't recall what I ended up doing for that project or what this was for, but uh, and it's been in my stash ever since. Um, as you can see, it's been textured with one of these spray textures, uh, so that's why it looks this way. But uh, I've, what I've done so far is marked off where the stormtroopers will be standing in relation to the land speeder, which will be at this angle here. And to give the illusion that the land speeder is floating, I've created this little platform. Now, I did kick around the idea of using magnets, but eh, it got a bit too complicated and I wanted something simpler. So what I have here is a square that I printed out of resin um, just for another project. I just happened to have it in my junk uh, drawer. And it just happens to be the right size. The land speeder should float around the knee level of the stormtroopers. Uh, to this, I've glued a piece of styrene to uh, give it a bit more surface area for the land speeder to rest on. And I've added a magnet in the middle because I think I'm going to put a magnet onto the land speeder so it can adhere somewhat to this platform. I just don't want it permanently secured. I want to be able to remove it. Okay, well, I've been thinking about what to use for creating the terrain, which is fairly flat. My first thought is to use Mod Podge mixed with this terrain cover, but note in this reference picture that the surface is a little textured, so I think I need to use something else to achieve that look. All right, I'll give that a little bit more thought, and we'll get started in a second. So for the terrain, I decided to use air dry clay by Sculpey, spreading a thin layer across the surface of the plaque. I applied a thicker layer around the corners and edges because I wanted to add in a little detail in these areas. To add in that detail, I ended up using my texture roller, but applied it in a random fashion. The intention is to suggest remnants of an old road that's been worn away. Next, I used water to smooth it over, then applied a coating of plain Mod Podge as a sealant. Now once this was all dried, I added in some fine terrain cover into the mix of Mod Podge, and this layer will provide fine texture to mimic sand and dirt. Once this was completely dried, I airbrushed a layer of craft paint as a base color, and the color I chose was sand from Americana. Once that was dried, I brushed on a wash of raw sienna, which was followed by another application of the base color. The wash was done to bring out some of the details left from the texture roller. Now, although I thought this was looking pretty good, I did think it was too much on the red side, and one step that I'm not showing here is yet one additional wash that I did with burnt umber. And once that was dry, I followed it yet with another application of the base color. And the final touch was to bring out some highlights, and this was done by dry brushing a mix of sand and ivory. And this is how it turned out. I think it looks pretty convincing. Well, I'm gonna put everything together now and show you the completed project next. Okay, so here we have the completed 114th land speeder from Ravel Models. As mentioned earlier, this actually is more on the order of 120th scale, with the model measuring 9.5 inches long and 5.5 inches wide. The build started with painting and detailing the figures you see here, which are from Falcon 3D Parts. They can be found either on eBay or Shapeways, and I've provided the link below. The figures not only are superior than the ones included with the kit, but also add in the characters of Obi-Wan and R2-D2. The details and facial resemblances are outstanding, and when painted, really add a lot to our diorama. I used Vallejo paints for all of the figures except C-3PO. For him, I ended up using a chrome gold paint from Gundam Marker EX, and this worked out beautifully. Although the figures are a bit on the pricey side, they really take this bill to another level for sure. Now my aim here was to recreate the scene of our heroes confronting Imperial Stormtroopers as they enter Mos Eisley. 
This required additional Stormtrooper figures, and I was able to print some with my Elegoo 8K printer using files found on cgtrader.com. The files include up to 24 poses, and I felt these worked out best for our diorama. They, however, did not include the Desert Stormtrooper backpacks, and I was fortunate enough to find that someone had designed files for creating these packs. They were originally designed to convert a Hot Toys 1-6 scale Stormtrooper, but I was able to size them down accordingly, and they worked out great. The backpack files are found on Cults3D.com, and I've placed a link to the troopers as well as the packs down below. The troopers were painted and weathered to make them appear as they did in the film. To accomplish this, I used a combination of splattering paint, using a Tamiya weathering kit to add some grime, and applying a brown wash to some of the details along the abdomens. Now, none of them came with the pauldron or shoulder pack, but with epoxy scale putty, I was able to add those details to this figure. The poses to the other two made it a bit difficult to try to add the same type of detailing, so I didn't bother to do so. The stormtroopers are attached to the base by inserting 1 16th brass pins, and this allows them to be removed when transporting the diorama. Overall, the speeder was an easy build, but I did do some modifications. First was to the cockpit, and this was required in order to accommodate the figures. The dashboard had to be trimmed to account for Luke and Ben, and the back section needed to be opened to allow C-3PO to be seated. I also added a steering column to connect the handles held by the new Luke figure. The dashboard has a hole for the original wheel, and that's where I connected it. Other modifications included adding more detail to the exposed engine. Using thin wires worked out great for this. Sculpting in a panel line on the middle engine housing and finally added two other details that were seen on the studio model, the damage to the right hand side and the gash along the nose, both of which were created using epoxy skull putty. Most of my time was spent painting and detailing, and the painting masks provided by Lou Del Mosso were a big help here. Also invaluable were photos from Flickr that helped me with choosing the colors for the speeder. Masking fluid along with the hairspray and salt technique allowed me to replicate the weathered look of the speeder, and I think the end results look very convincing. Finally, the display base was simple to create with the use of air dry clay from Sculpey along with Mod Podge. Those materials are so easy to work with and have proven to be a great choice for making all kinds of terrains. Overall, I'm very pleased with the end results and although there are some inaccuracies, the kit results in a very nice replica, which is going to make a great addition to my Star Wars collection. All right, guys. Well, that is going to be a wrap for this project. I hope you enjoyed following along. It certainly was a fun one to work on and something I've been wanting to get to for some time. Uh, one thing I wanted to leave you with, by the way, or mention here is how I weathered the front window. So I was trying to figure out how to go about doing this, just kicking around a few ideas. But what I decided on was to use the uh, base color. So I just uh, diluted the base color, one part paint to four parts water, put that in my airbrush. I held the windshield at arm's length away and just sprayed on a fine mist until it got to about the level of density that I wanted and I think it did a great job mimicking a dusty window. Uh, another thing I wanted to comment on was modifying the sleeve of Obi-Wan. If you recall, I had to do that to clear that one, that uh, front windshield and I went back to look at the picture. If you look here, it doesn't look like he had to do that. My guess is that he put something under Obi-Wan to lift him a bit. It doesn't take much to clear that window, which is why I think he looks a bit taller than Luke does. Now, he is a little taller to begin with as I look at them, but uh, it looks like he's a bit taller in that picture, so I think that's how he got around that. Um, so I, I didn't really give that much thought. I just was testing everything, and, and I was just thinking, man, this is just not going to clear, so that's why I proceeded with what I did. Uh, but if you do have these figures, that uh, is probably the way to go. Uh, that also means that you're going to have to make further modifications of the dashboard to clear his legs because he's going to be a bit higher so you're probably going to have to get rid of pretty much all the plastic on that one side and just leave the top portion. Okay guys, well uh, coming up on the channel now are going to be two box openings. One is going to be that large TIE fighter that was just released. I'm just waiting for that to get in from ColtTVMan.com. And I also have another box opening. This is a kit available from Cosmic Scale Models. This is the uh, hangar deck that they have from the Battlestar Galactica Reimagined series, and I'll give you a closer look at that one. So these are definitely two projects that I'll be working on in the future. I'm not going to get to them before the end of the year, but uh, I think I'll definitely get to them in, in uh, 2024. So coming up also next month is Halloween. Man, it's hard to believe it's around the corner now. I already have in mind what I want to do for my Halloween build, but I'll wait to give you those details next month. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at innershadowmodeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.